the other thing that was in the census that we learned about uh, the numbers of people of different religions is 87 Scientologists in Ireland and uh, I'm sure they're all going to be celebrating all 87 of them this weekend big new centre uh, being opened a European hub is what some people are calling it down in Fur House in South West Dublin uh, it was a big uh, Christian community church it has uh, amongst other things it has 1100 a, co- a conference room should I say that can fit 1100 people so 87 Scientologists would be very lonely knocking around in a room that size as with anything to do with Scientology it has attracted a fair bit of attention um, and ahead of the opening tomorrow our own reporter Sean Defoe has been in the area he's been speaking to people amongst them Peter Griffiths from Mayo who is an ex-Scientologist and he was telling Sean how he got hooked into the religion when he was collecting his then wife from a meeting I didn't see anything wrong in it when I walked into Collector one day and got roped into doing the personality test and being told that uh, I was depressed and had no confidence and all the rest of it. Um, I didn't agree with any of that, but I was told that I could improve myself. And with that, I couldn't disagree. So I took the plunge. And of course, once you take one step in a certain direction, and you're being guided along to the next step and the next step, because that's what it, what it is all about. I mean, once you get your foot on that treadmill, so to speak, you take the next step. You haven't got a choice. If you don't, you fall over. And that's kind of what it's like. Um, it's a well-oiled, well-constructed machine designed to suck people in and suck them of everything that they hold valuable. Moving on then to the Ireland branch of it, I suppose people wouldn't know a huge amount. How many Scientologists are there in Ireland and uh, how many properties, how many bases do they have? Well, at the moment, they've got three offices. The original one, I say they originally started off in a guy's kitchen. There's the office on Abbey Street. There's the one they opened on Merrion Square. Um, last year, the National Affairs Office, and then there's this new one. Now, that's fascinating because according to the census, there's only 87 Scientologists in Ireland. And I actually don't think there's that many. I think some people put that down as a joke, as you know, people do on the census, sometimes just put down anything. And of course, Scientology being topical, hey, I think I'll put down, I'm a Scientologist. That'll be a laugh. Um, I, I really don't believe there is 87 Irish Scientologists in the world. Um, so it beggars the question, what's going on? You know, why are they opening a 1,300-seater complex in Tala? You know, I mean, what is going on? Well, that's what I was going to ask you next. What are they trying to do by building this base out in, in Tala? Is, is there a strategy for Ireland when it comes to Scientology? The strategy has, has been since, I, when did it start? I think the early 2000s of buying buildings, usually, you see, these places are used, like, obviously, like, you know, big cities like Dublin, Madrid, Paris, and they buy what they call an ideal org. An org is short for organization. They don't call them churches, by the way, when, when you're in there, unless you're talking to a member of the public and then it becomes a church, right? So... They buy these usually landmark buildings. The fascinating thing is that they get the local parishioners to to pay for them. So they have fundraising efforts and they eventually buy this building and they're all excited because they've got this building. Then they give it to the Scientology landlord's office that then rents it back to the people who've just bought it for them. It's an amazing scam. So Scientology has this like sideline and it's called real estate. Yeah, Peter Griffiths there, the uh, ex-Scientologist speaking to our own reporter, Sean Defoe. It is fascinating. People uh, do have a fascination uh, with Scientology. This is a huge centre for people who don't know it uh, down in Fur House. Uh, there's a lot of speculation that maybe it's got to do with Brexit, that their big European centre is in Maiden Hill in the United Kingdom and they might need a European centre in the EU uh, post-Brexit and they want an English-speaking country, obviously, given that they're mostly United States-based and uh, Ireland has got lucky. So, look, I know the government are really keen to attract uh, investment and attention and jobs away from the United Kingdom into Ireland post-Brexit. So maybe they'll give themselves a pat on the back and congratulate themselves to the Scientologists uh, making their way here. Over the weekend, hundreds of Scientologists from across Europe and around the world gathered in Dublin uh, to mark the opening of the Secretive Religion's newest centre in Fairhouse in South Dublin. It's understood the head of Scientology, David Miscavige, uh, I think I pronounced that correctly, was among those in attendance at the event, which was closed off to the public and picketed by protesters. 
kilometres. Locals have expressed concerns about, about what the new facility, which can seat over 1,000 people, will be used for by the controversial faith, which has caused allegations of brainwashing, cultish behaviours and financial questions. Now, our reporter Richard Chambers was in Ferraz on the day and he joins us now. Good morning, Richard. Good morning, Paul. So, what happened? Yeah, this was a, a, a very strange one, Paul, to say the least. Security was tight for this event and that drove a bit of intrigue. And there's always a lot of interest and scepticism and fears, to be honest, whenever there's anything to do uh, with Scientology. Now, we'll get into why that is in just a bit, but it was in Fur House, a very bizarre site. This was the former Victory Centre, which was a big Baptist church, which came into the hands of Scientology for about six million quid through vulture funds. It was decked out in tricolour ribbons and balloons, but you couldn't actually see it from the street. You had hoardings and plywood up blocking it off from the road. And it made this a very, very private ceremony indeed. In fact, the church actually had speakers set up uh, facing outwards towards the street to drown out the sound of any potential noisy protesters. So private security actually closed off a bus stop, a footpath, and caused a little bit of traffic chaos for this. It wasn't your average Saturday in Furhouse, Paul. And these locals had a variety of views on the subject. For most, they're very concerned about the reputation of Scientology and what it might mean for the area. Most people are really against them being here. Please please don't understand how they got here in the first place. You know, this building could have been used for a school, it could have been used for something for the community, and then just overnight it's like, oh, Scientologists are coming here. Everyone's like, oh, I'd be scared for my children, you know, because you know, they're anti, you know, a lot of our values, so they're not even a religion, they're a cult. <laughs> Well, I live here, and of course I represent, really, I suppose, the Christian faith in this area because I'm a retired Baptist minister, you see. I've not had any dealings with them in the past, and I'll give them the freedom to do what they want, but it must be under the law. It's a, it's a, it's a cult based on fi- financial money. It really is. And uh, I don't like it on my doorstep. Looks well, yeah. Good for the day. Ah, yeah. Well, as far as I'm concerned, any, any new thing is, is good for an area. You know, brings a bit of life... You know, it, uh, it it can't it can't do any harm really. Mm. So it bring in new people. It's good for the area. I suppose we go to the local economy as well. I don't know, man. It's a bit weird, especially to come to this part of the community. But I'm going across the road to get the bus, and I can't even get the bus. And there's security men looking at me over there, like, what? I think it's like a money scam. I don't want to see if Tom Cruise would be coming out having an old uh, having an old gander today. Like, I hope they don't go around knocking on doors as well, and you know, say, you know, come join us or blah blah blah, whatever. But it's it's a bit fishy. I don't really like it, man. So, Richard, who actually attended this event? And there aren't actually many members of the Church of Scientology here, are there? Like, to say this is a minority religion or or group of people is putting it rather mildly, isn't it? It is indeed, yeah. This is a minority of a minority. Only 87 people, Paul, according to the 2016 census, actually registered as Scientologists. And experts said that figure, you know, it might actually be inflated as people mark down whatever for a laugh, you know. There is a growing physical presence, though, of Scientology in Ireland. The centre on Merrion Square opened last year. They've had operations on Abbey Street in Dublin for a long time too. And you've seen spin-off groups which come under the veneer of anti-drugs campaigns, handing out leaflets at com- leaflets at uh, conferences for school pupils and at the Square in Tallis. So David Miscavige, who's the head of the church globally, he was said to be in attendance at the opening of this centre in Fur House on Saturday. But you wouldn't know that from the road where you couldn't see anything and the church wouldn't tell us anything either. But I did manage to grab a very short word with some Scientologists who are attending the launch. They were flown in from around the world, Paul. There's people from Scotland, from England, from Denmark, from Italy, from Austria, from Germany and Ireland as well, though. Up to 1,500 in total, we understand. Here's what they had to tell me when I asked them about these allegations of corruption internationally and the charges of Scientology being a cult. Morning, how are you doing? How's it going? You going? You going across the road? Yeah. What's the crack? Plan? Absolutely. What's the plan? The plan is we're going for the ribbon cut in the opening and see what it's all about. Where are you from yourself? Dublin. I mean, are you a member of the church? Or? I am, I am. She isn't. That's, right. my, sis, that's my sister. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of hype in the press about Scientology. I mean, yeah. What do you make of all that? Well, the thing is that it's, that's the, the press. It's not exactly balanced all the time. So they need to just go in and read a book or just check it out for themselves and make their own minds up. People say it's a cult and exploits vulnerable people. Is that fair, do you think? I think the best thing is to, for people to make up their own minds, just have a look themselves, you know. Use their intelligence. Yeah. And coming there, yes. Yeah, where are you from? Germany, Stuttgart. Germany, Stuttgart. Uh, I will see, I don't know what is going on, just for the, for the opening. Yeah. How long have you been a Scientologist? <laughs> 42 years. 42 yeah. years. I mean, there's a lot of like hype and that comes out about Scientology in the press. What do you think about all that? There's no, no good news there. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't, we don't take care of others. <laughs> do you think it's unfair? 
right, of course, but there's, yeah, a little bit stupid and disinformed. That's uh, the, the, the problem. Uh, it's all fake news, just like Donald Trump. What about the protest then, Richard? Uh, what was their gripe with the group and did it pass off peacefully? <laughs> Yeah, the issues they have are the same that have been highlighted, Paul, multiple times in the media over the years. You know, claims that the church exploits vulnerable people, financially ruins people, its views on medication, psychiatry and mental health. Uh, These are all denied by the church itself, which has a very deep and a very intense mistrust and disdain, frankly, for the press. So many of those protesting, besides the locals who had concerns about their young people being converted, potentially, uh, a lot of them were former Scientologists and they came both from Ireland and from further afield. So here are two of the most prominent voices on the day. John McGee, who's a Mead man, who's a former member of the church, and first Bill Drummond from the UK, who was as well a Scientologist. He made a point, though, to speak with private security ahead of the protest. We're here to do this right. We won't cause you any trouble. Oh, I've got a thousand balloons. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, this you know, window will be in Dublin before nightfall. Not- I will not allow any acts of violence or abuse. Uh, I've come all the way from Plymouth to support the Irish. They're my friends. And I was a Scientologist for 52 years. My family's all trapped in this church, more than 25 of my relatives and brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles. Somebody has to stand up to them. We don't really know what's going on here. Some people say it's because of Brexit. I think we're in a period of transition for the Church of Scientology for Europe. They're not welcome in Germany and they're not welcome in France and having a lot of trouble in Belgium. Ireland's welcoming, obviously, except well, Southern Ireland, with open arms at the moment. But the people are beginning to wake up and realise what's going on. John McGee. For me, it was a quirky thing. Something's a bit left of centre, something a little bit crazy that I wanted to try. But I didn't expect their anti-medicine uh, dis- family disconnection. How long did this were you in for? Three years, too long. I hang my head in shame for that, but still, yeah, here I am now. There needs to be uh, a debate about this, uh, but hopefully today we'll have brought uh, some knowledge of Scientology to the forefront.